Justin. Yeah. Oh, okay, you can have that. <laughs> this is why I voice over things. Yeah. Oh, come on, I'm strapped over here. Clearly, I know what I'm doing. If you like. Hi, crafty people. Today, I'm joined by Alice and Ruben, who are my two cloth nappy wearing kids. And today, I'm going to share with you a tutorial about how I make some wet bags. Wet bags are a really useful thing if you do cloth nappies so that you can put dirty nappies in them on the go if they need to be changed while you're out. But they're also really good to have in your nappy bag even if you don't cloth nappy because your kid might still need a bag to put in some dirty clothes or any other sort of little uh, bodily fluid accident that happens while you're out and about. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I make these two wet bags here where I have two different sorts, a small one with a top zip and a large one with a zip down here and a strap here. Sorry buddy, you didn't like that on your leg. I'm sorry about that. Okay. And I'll also be showing you how I made a few different variants that Alice is holding here. If this is your first time on my channel, then welcome. My name is Marie and like I said, here is Alice. She is my one and a half year old and Reuben is my little two week old. And I also have two older children as well. So these are my two youngest out of my four kids. I have cloth nappied with all four of my children. I think it's a great thing to do. And I love having wet bags that we've made, especially these ones here. Uh oh, did you drop some? That's okay. Especially these ones here with such lovely fabrics that I have been gifted from Noosa Fabric & Co. I did a fabric review last week, so I'll link that video down below if you haven't seen it yet, when I unboxed these fabrics and a few other fabrics from Noosa Fabric Co. Wet bags are made using PUL, which is a waterproof fabric, obviously, because you don't want dirty nappies to be getting wetness all over everything else in your nappy bag. Oh dear. I hope you enjoy the process of me making these wet bags today and if you do enjoy it don't forget to leave a like down below so YouTube knows that this is a valuable video to you. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and go on to the tutorial about how I made these wet bags. So let's get making. My mum makes wet bags. You're going to need your PUL fabric, some polyester thread, I'll explain why polyester a little later, wonder clips instead of pins or any other sort of clips, a zip and you'll also need a pen. You need to use a permanent texture because on this plastic type fabric you can't use a fabric marker, it won't stick, it'll end up just rubbing off. You can slightly see the texture markings on the other side of the fabric so just be aware of that and make sure you're drawing those lines really carefully. To make this small wet bag, we're starting by cutting out two rectangles exactly the same size. I'll leave the dimensions that I used in the description box down below, but you can really make these wet bags any size you like. I'm going to open my zip up slightly and then put it face down on top of one of my rectangles of fabric. And I'm using my Wonder Clips to pin it in place instead of pins. I'm going to sew down the edge of my zipper as closely to the zipper teeth as possible, so I've moved my needle as far to the left as possible, and I have increased my stitch length as well because I want as few needle marks as possible to make as few holes as possible, which is the same reason I didn't use pins. Pins would leave hole marks in my PUL fabric, which obviously if you're making something waterproof, holes are not ideal. If you don't have wonder clips though, that's fine. You could use paper clips or you could use hair clips, anything like that, or you could just really carefully hold it in place. I'm sewing my second piece of PUL fabric to the other side of my zip in the same way as I did my first piece using a long straight stitch. When I get to the point where the zip is, I put my needle down and lift up my presser foot and slide the zip up underneath the presser foot. And then once I've pushed the zip out of the way, I can lower my presser foot and continue sewing the rest of that side of the zip. I'm changing my thread now to one that is complementary to the colour of my wet bag and I'm doing a top stitch down either side of the zip so that the wet bag sits flat against the zip and it also attaches the zip at the back so that it's not flapping around. Now that our zip is attached, we're able to start constructing the sides of our bag. So to do this, I fold the good sides of my fabric together and then I clip down all three of those open edges. Then I'm going to just sew a straight stitch around those three edges. I've left the zip open slightly so that I'm able to then turn it inside out through the hole that is open in the zip. When you get to a corner, make sure that you put your needle down, lift up your presser foot and turn your fabric so you're able to get a nice clean corner before you sew down the next edge. 
Before turning your bag in the right way, you're going to need to clip the excess fabric off the corners, making sure that you don't clip your stitches. And then you can just push your bag in the right way through the open zip and your little wet bag is all complete. Next, we're going to be making a larger wet bag with a snap closed handle. Before I show you that though, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Snaps Australia and the products that they sell that you could use to make wet bags just like this. Snaps Australia also gifted me a cam snap machine and a whole bunch of snaps, which I have used to make these little handles here so that if you're out and about, you can clip your wet bag onto your nappy bag or your pram or whatever it is, or if you're at home, clipping onto your change table so that you're able to hang it, but then you're able to unclip it and take it off to put it in the wash. So thank you to Snaps Australia who gifted me that product. You'll see it a little later on in the video. They are professional quality snaps and they have been really great for this project and a whole bunch of other projects. I'm sure you'll see them in some of my future videos as well. Yeah. Want that? Okay. They also sell PUL fabric on their website, mostly in solid plain colors. So if having pattern fabric isn't quite your thing, then maybe check out Snaps Australia. To make this larger wet bag, I'm going to cut out just one rectangle, which will be the front piece. And then I'll cut out the backing piece in a little bit once I have finished sewing the zip in place. I'm also cutting out the handle piece. And if you'd like to know the exact measurements of what I did to make this wet bag, they'll be in the description box down below. Or again, the same with the first wet bag, you could make this any size you like. I fold the handle of my wet bag in half lengthwise and I'm pinning along one short edge and one long edge. And I'm going to be sewing a straight stitch down those two sides. Then I'm measuring where I would like my zip to be and I'm drawing a straight line at that point so I can cut along it ready to sew my zip in. We're going to sew the zip in place in the same way as we did with a small wet bag by placing my zip face down on top of one of my pieces of my front fabric and I'm going to sew down it with a long straight stitch. I'm using polyester thread, which I also used for my first wet bag. And the reason that I'm using this is because cotton thread will let more water through. Because polyester thread is plastic essentially, it will help to retain the waterproof qualities of your wet bag better than using a cotton thread. I'm using basically the exact same process as I did for my first wet bag in order to attach my zip to this wet bag. I first attached it to one side of my fabric and then I'm doing the same thing to my second side of fabric. And I have also sewn along those sides of my small little handle to make it into a tube. I use a chopstick to help push the handle in the right way and especially to push out those corners on the closed side of the handle. Then I'm going to top stitch along the handle and along the two sides of the zip the same way that I did with my first wet bag. I'm top stitching down both of the long sides and the one closed side of my handle and this will help keep the handle flat so that it doesn't look as twisted when I attach it onto my wet bag. Now that my zip is attached, I can more accurately see the size that my wet bag is going to be. So I'm using the front piece of my wet bag to trace out the size that I'd like my back piece to be. To sew it all together, I'm placing the open edge of my handle against the side of the wet bag. And then I'm using one of my clips to pin that in place and then pinning the whole way around all four sides of my wet bag. I'm leaving the zip open slightly so that once it's all sewn together, I can turn it in the right way again through the zip. And the same as with my first wet bag, I'm clipping the corners to reduce the bulk before I turn it in the right way. The last thing I have left to do on this wet bag is to attach the little snaps so that my handle will close on itself. To do this, I'm using my snaps press that Snaps Australia have gifted me. And it is actually a bit of a learning process in order to use this machine. The snaps have two different sides to them, a male side and a female side, and you need to make sure to be using one of each in order for the snap to close correctly. I've made myself a little cheat sheet here in order to see the difference between each one. But essentially you just poke a hole in your fabric using the provided little skewer thing that they send you. And then you use your machine to attach a male clip on one side and a female clip on the other. If you're interested to know more details about how to use the Snaps machine, I'll link Snaps Australia's tutorial video in my description box down below. So here is our completed large wet bag with the snap handle, and here is our completed smaller wet bag. And next, I'm going to show you one last variation that you also might like to try. If you don't want to use a snap handle, you can just attach both sides of your handle to the edge of your wet bag. In this case, I'm attaching it to the top of the wet bag so that I'd be able to hang it from the top. But you could also attach both sides of your handle to the side of your wet bag as we did with the first one. And this is what it turns out like. 
There are so many variations you could make on these wet bags. You could make small wet bags with the handle or without and large ones with the handle or without. You could make the large wet bags with a top zip rather than the zip further down or with a handle that's attached on both sides instead of a snap. There are just so many options and you can just customize it to suit what you need. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial as I made these wet bags and that you're able to so there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed yeah. it. These are for mama. You hold these ones. So there you have no, it. So there. No. These are mama's. You use those ones. Okay? Okay. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed watching the tutorial as I made these wet bags here and that you're able to use what you have learnt today to make a wet bag for yourself. If you have enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, don't forget to press like down below and feel free to subscribe to come back and watch some of our future videos. They're probably as chaotic as this in every video. Alice, can you come sit back up here, miss? Okay, you found the remote to the air conditioner. Oh, and you're vomiting. <laughs> it's okay. Bit of milk vomit. We're all good. We're all good. We carry on. If you'd like to watch another of my videos after this, I'll leave a few of my videos linked in the description box down below of some of my other baby related projects that you might be interested in watching. Thanks again for watching this video. We hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, go get creative and we'll see you later. <laughs> more? There's no more. That's the end. End. <laughs>